finding out the derivative of this with respect to some w h j is that we can do okay in the derivative so other kind of thing when you are finding out that it's going to become two times you know depending on the derivative of this okay two times upon by two y d minus s y j okay, we will be getting this term then you will be finding out the derivative of this okay so there is a minus here so it's minus will be there so do s j y j by do y j so this term is what we have computed to be equal to s s slash y j okay so this term is what okay so when you are finding out this so this two and two get cancel so you will be getting minus y d minus s y j this term multiplied by do s y j by do y j so this is what i is mentioned uh, here to look at the derivation to take a look at this derivation you can clearly see that is what dj minus s of y j k s slash y j k that is what uh -huh. so that's entire term you call it as delta j k you understand okay so that's delta j k yes, multiplied by s h f so this another term will be there when you differentiate this once you are going to get uh, one more term but uh, s j k also will be there Right. Yeah, this is what the fundamental derivative. Then you will be finding out this value. Right. This is delta j k. One more term you will be finding out the derivative. Okay. Okay. This of then this and the error in this is equal to and the formula used for this. Can you put it wrong? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That is, I think this is uh, there is a mistake here, right? no? Okay. Yes, H or ma? Yes, H or ma? Or is that H or ma? Ah, this is ah, this is not this is not right. This is S H. Okay, between hidden and the output layer, this will be this. Is that H H? Not this one. Okay, delta J is going to be is that H H? You understand? Between these two only it is right. Okay. Yes, sir. Right? Yeah. This is is that yes, H H? Yes, yes, right. Yes, so we will be using this formula for computing. Now, if you look at the problem, clearly you can understand. Stage by stage, you can clearly visualize. You compute E one first, followed by um, yeah, this is a problem. You compute this. So you compute. Um, Ah, uh, E one one, okay, this is one. E two one, this is one. Then delta one, delta two. Delta one, how you are computing? You are using this term. E one the first term. E one one into this term. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, is that one? Ah, uh, that is point uh, seven varieties. Yeah, this one. S one y y one k into one minus S one y one. S into y one k. The function of this is sigma d function. So that you'll be getting this. delta two one the same manner you have to work out, but you have to take this one. Okay, okay. delta h one previously. So that way only you are working out. Then you have to update the weights. So today, in fact, maybe you can practice a bit. So I'll give you an assignment you can practice. Okay, one more time if you practice, you understand it clearly. We are working. So today's class, um, anybody having any difficulty so far in understanding this? Hi, Pawani. You understand clearly this one derivation. Yes, sir. Yes. Varsha. Varsha, is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Anywhere you find it difficulty, you can work out this problem on your own. Yes, sir. I'll try, sir. Yeah. Rupa Maitreyi. Yes, sir. You can work out this on your own. I. Okay. Let's see. Sujit Prakash. 
Yes, sir. Only you told guys are coming every day. What about the rest of the guys? Are they listening to the lecture or what they are doing? I don't know. Only you told guys are coming every day. Maybe you have to check. Fine. So now let us proceed with uh, the next topic is unsupervised learning. We already learnt about the simple associative network like this. The best class I will introduce you to unsupervised learning using Hebbian learning approach. We already have an idea how a Hebbian learning really works. So the topics that we need to cover are more like this. See, we are going to talk about unsupervised associative learning. Okay, so here we will be learning something called instar outstar rule. Then associative, bidirectional associative memory. Then you'll be learning something called competitive networks. Competitive. An extension of it, uh, you'll be learning self-organizing map. In other maybe 10 classes, we'll be covering all this. Instar outstar rule, BAM, competitive network, self-organizing map, then followed by Hawk field network. Same associative, but uh, feedback. So far, we are talking about only about feed forward networks. So it's more kind of a recurrent network, it's a classic example. Recurrent networks. There will be feedbacks involved. Self organizing map, competitive network. Then two more topics LBQ and ART. Okay, so these are all some of the algorithms we'll be learning. Okay. So these two are coupled along with the Hebbian, which are related one to one, BAM also. Hop field network is slightly different. Okay. So self organizing map is slightly different. And LBQ is connected to competitive network and the ART also. Okay. So we'll be in a position to understand all these once you gain some insight on the learning algorithms. Uh, the learning rules, in fact. Okay, let us try to understand it one by one. So this is a simple associative network we've been talking about. So P is the input signal. When the value of P is 1, there is a stimulus to the system. And the output is response. K is 1. No stimulus, no response. Okay. So can somebody tell me what is Hebbian learning? It's all about Hebbian learning. How do we learn in the case of Hebbian networks? Supervised more particularly. You update the weights based on what? I recall that to be in learning. Anybody from the class? I recall this. What is the rule? Can I recall this? Basic rule is what? What is what do you understand from this? CQ, PQ. If the input goes high, the output also goes high. What will happen to the weight? Anybody from the class? Sir, uh, with the proportion of the new neuron firing, oh, sir, like, uh, increase. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Somebody wanted to say something. Abhijit, uh, Abhijit, who spoke now? Abhijit? Ah, yes, sir. Yeah, Abhijit, what you are trying to convey, man? From this? Sir, uh, with the proportion of the new iron firing, will uh, uh, I mean decrease or increase the weight, sir? With the proportion? Are you sure? What about this T, T Q and P Q? What you are representing? This is the target, okay? This is the P Q is the input. If both are high, okay, when the, when the stimulus is there and the response is also there, then you increase the weight. Okay, that's what we learned by Hebbian learning. Okay, for example, if the input is low, then when there is no stimulus, the target is high, okay, then there, there won't be weight update. In fact, you are, you are going to have a very low value here, one into zero. Okay, you get zero. So we are strengthening the weights based on the kind of a stimulus. For example, a particular input. It's going to help a neuron to fire 
we are trying to associate that muons input with that output okay? we are trying to associate so thereby association memory comes only primarily because what there is an input stimuli which activates a neuron to fire so if both are one then i'll update the weight if one is high and is zero i will not be updating the weight okay so uh, that's the kind of uh, thing you are noticing here so the kind of kind of connection you are talking about here. so that is what target there is a label here now without target how we can do unsupervised to move of learning can imagine that so here is a classic example okay so here we have a banana associated okay we have a sight of banana and then the smell of banana okay, i am going to keep this weight constant all this okay and i am going to update this weight so this is the smell of banana okay so now initially we call this one as p not as, a, as, a, as something called unconditioned stimulus and p is equal to 1 is it conditioned stimulus okay why it is called conditioned stimulus can somebody explain see when you see a banana the network can immediately conclude it is banana there is no difficulty but without seeing a banana for example if you are seeing a banana only when you have smell whether you are in a position to associate it with banana that's the kind of problem we are talking about okay when there is no sight of banana okay but you have smell then it means you are trying to associate the smell of the banana with the banana and you are trying to conclude something okay there is a banana is coming for you or something like that. okay so that's the kind of thing we are talking about here so it's called unconditioned stimulus this is called conditioned stimulus now the same manner whatever we are we have worked out the hard limited function i am using here w not p not plus w p plus b and this output of the neuron a okay this is our output of the neuron. now uh, look into it so is unsupervised hebrew is more like this so what are they we are in the q iteration q indicates iteration number okay and the pj indicates the input and the a indicates the output of the neuron output of neuron here are we using any targets no it's unsupervised primarily because we don't know what will be the initial output it's unsupervised okay so naturally alpha times a q p2 p transpose 2 is the in the previous um, uh, supervised learning mode it is more like p q this is what we did target is there target is given you update the weight but here there is no target that's the only difference unsupervised this is output of the neuron i'm directly taking okay so this is a training sequence of data i have what you are observing so in the case of banana recognition example the initial weights are here okay so this is a um, this is a stimulus this is a condition the stimulus is zero i'm keeping the initial random weights at zero uh, but for the kind of unconditioned stimulus i'm keeping that value equal to 1 always a kind of a constant value i'm keeping okay so then uh, uh, i'll be updating the weights so i'm going to give the unconditioned stimulus as zero and conditioned stimulus as one it means unconditioned stimulus is what sight i'm not showing the banana and conditioned stimulus is smell i'm giving the smell okay so then what happens i'm going to use this method with this updation weight updation weight updation first titration sight fails okay there is no sight of banana so i'm passing on the information A1, the output of the neuron, I'll be getting for the initial set of weights. A, W0, P0, 1 plus W0, P1 minus 0.5 is the bias. So naturally, this value is going to be 0 minus 0.5. Minus 0.5 means it is zero. There is no response. The network is not in a position to imagine a banana. Okay. So what is the key point? Take away point. Then the updated weight is going to be equal to zero. Okay, primarily because a one is zero, 
A1 is 0, P1 is going to get multiplied to P1, but that's also going to become 0. Initial weight is 0, I'm going to get 0. Okay, is it clear? Can you imagine how we are running this? Can you imagine what will happen next? Do you understand the problem? See, this is a condition. One stimulus, no response. The response. A is a response. It can be no stimulus, no response. Okay. Now, here is a problem. The problem is unconditioned stimulus, conditioned stimulus. I am keeping W equal to 0 for the conditioned stimulus. Unconditioned stimulus, I am keeping it equal to 1. Okay. So, now I am going to update. This is a learning rule I am going to apply. And the first iteration has failed. So, even though I am giving some smell, of banana, the network is not in a position to associate it with banana. It is showing zero. Okay, now what we need to do? Can you guess? In order to improve the learning ability of the network, to sense the uh, smell and to decide that is a banana. How it will? How we can do it? Can you guess? Can you guess? The idea, yeah. The second iteration, we need to provide the site. So we are allowing the network to learn now. Okay, we provide the site, thereby you are getting banana immediately. Okay, so uh, we provide the site means the sense P O O two is one. There is an initial weight of one. So naturally you are getting the output uh, one. Okay, so W two now is getting updated. The second iteration is getting updated, weight is updated, so it's going to become one. Okay. Now the third iteration, even though the site fails, what happens? You are in a position to find out it is one. Can you see the logic how we are working out this? See, I don't know initially, so I'm just keeping the weight W0 as zero. Remember, this weight is zero initially. This weight is zero. But now I'm learning. Okay, I'm going to learn from the this weight. Okay, so I'm going to relate a banana with the smell. That's association. So thereby I'll be position. I'll be in a position to work out the algorithm comfortably. See here, even though the first step it has failed, the first iteration it has failed. Sight is failed. No 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 sign of a banana. But even though I'm giving the smell, smell stimulus, the network is not in a position to recognize it. So there is no response. But as soon as I provide a banana to the and allow the network to learn, even though the W1, this uh, uh, smell stimulus weight, associated weight is zero, the network is in a position to find out it is banana because of the sight factor. It is seeing it, but visual perception is okay. Visually perceiving it. But in the next iteration, even though the sight fails, Okay, as it has learned there is a banana based on the previous stage, and you have also updated the weights. Okay, so the weight now is 1 for this W0, W1. Okay, this W1 becomes W2 now, it becomes 1 here. Now, because of that, I'm, uh, I'm getting this. So, I'm getting the banana even though the site has failed. Okay, can you see the logic behind it? What is the problem you will encounter here? And see the logic. See, I, am I updating W O W zero? This one, you are not updating that. As I told you, told you earlier, the first one. So this one now, nah. this weight I am not going to update at all. This weight is fixed. I am going to update only this weight. Okay. So this weight is going to be fixed, and I am going to update only this. This is a conditioned stimulus. I am talking. So naturally, for one initial weight, W1, okay, even though there is a weight, the value is 1 here. As I am not showing the banana, it's going to be 0, pattern 0 is 0. Everything is 0, the first iteration. But in the second iteration, what happens? I am showing the banana. So naturally, because of the initial weight is one fixed weight I have, I am going to get the output 1 immediately. But now, as I got output 1, I am going to update my weight. 
what is the formula for weight updation output response into input okay both are high so naturally i am going to get one so naturally my the, the updation weight for the uh, the condition the stimulus okay it's going to get increased are you getting the point it's going to become one more now in the next case when the third iteration fails when the site fails in fact what happens as I, my newly newly constructed weight is w2 is 1 even though for a no site information i am getting my output 1 as well okay so that's the power so now it's something as it has learned okay the new weight is now what w3 that becomes now 2 so that weight is going to get strengthened sir yeah here uh, the site fails to recognize banana and so yeah. the smell we are uh, getting it yeah, as banana. Right. Yeah. But if it is not banana also the site will fail like it will be zero no sir then the smell will give a banana means. No, no, like, see we have to understand we are going to fix a sensor. Okay, this idea. We are going to fix a sensor. Okay. See here this is a sensor. I got two sensors. Imagine this is a kind of a problem you can imagine like this. Okay, so when the, one of the sensor fails, imagine, with one information you can take corrective action. You understand? The fault data uh, recognition kind of a problem. Okay, so for example, you have some hundred sensors in an uh, aircraft and uh, you are using some, uh, suddenly some around 50 sensors have failed. Okay, with the 50 sensors, the remaining 50 sensors data, are you in a position to take appropriate decisions? That's the kind of a problem we are talking about here. You understand? A bigger problem. Okay. So here, how we are doing it is in the sense when you, as soon as you sense a smell of a banana, okay, you sense a smell of a banana. Definitely, without banana, you won't get the smell. You agree? You, how you yes, get sir. the sensor output? You get it when there is no banana. So naturally, when the banana smell is there, you will be concluding this. But the problem is, more and more the banana you are going to keep. You are going to keep sensing. Okay, this weight is going to shoot up. Yes, you're going to keep on updating the weight. Am I right? It becomes yes, two, three, four, like that. So that's the problem with heavy and learning. We discussed it long time back. I hope you can recall that. For that, what we solution we solutions we worked out. Can you recall that? What's the like solution? A DK so rate. Normal. Yeah, yeah. No, no, DK rate. I oh, said okay. weight DK rate. In fact, uh, forgetting factor is something we discussed. I hope you can recall that. We have to forget the old weights. Okay, so. So weights can become arbitrarily large. There is no mechanism for weights to decrease. So that's the problem. We keep adding, we keep showing the network more and more banana. If it keeps seeing more and more banana, okay, then gradually every iteration the weights are going to get increased. Okay, this weight will become a huge value after some time. So that will be a problem. So in fact, uh, that can be addressed with the help of what you call Hebrew rule with DK for the same unsupervised problem. It is not supervised, remember this. It is unsupervised mode of learning. Unsupervised mode of learning. So I am including a gamma factor for the old weights. Okay, This value can be a low value between 0 to 1 or something I can choose. And that way I can choose a value of gamma in such a fashion that I can fix a bound for it. Okay, for example, for all the training data set, I'm going to have AQ P transpose Q one one each. This is one, and the target is also one. So naturally, what will happen? This weight will become saturated. If we keep on updating the weights, but instead of that, what I'm going to do? I'm going to introduce this gamma factor, which can help me to get like this because this value is one. A this value A one into one. So this is one. Therefore, I'm going to get alpha like this. Wij max I can fix by choosing these two parameters. This is called hyperparameter. By choosing this value, I can fix the saturation limit for the weight. Understand what I'm saying? Are you getting the point? I repeat again. For, uh, for updation of the weight, what do I need to have? AQ to be high, the network output should be high, the input is high. There should be a stimulus and there should be a response. Then only weight will be updated. The first case, what we learn when there is no stimulus, when the perception is not working properly. We notice that there is no response also. And then I included the perception, I got one output. And then I removed the perception, but with only smell, I got one. Okay. 
So whenever I get one in the output with input stimulation, okay, my weights is going to get updated. That's what the AQP transpose two indicates. We keep on updating. So I'm going to fix a upper bound for this weight by choosing this gamma. Then I'm going to assume that okay, this this keeps the weight matrix from going without them. Okay, look at this. So when these two values are one for so many iterations, then this will shoot up. But I'm going to restrict that by fixing this value alpha and gamma. Okay, this WJ max will be reaching only a particular value. Okay, so that is the idea. So now with the same banana isosceles problem, we're going to keep alpha equal to one, and gamma equal to point one. What will happen initially? The same same way, no response. Why there is no response? No sight of banana. Then what happens? I'm going to get zero. No weight rotation. Second iteration, sight works. Perception is working. So I'm going to have banana immediately recognized. Output is going to be one. That is, my output A is going to be one. Input pattern is also one. Both the patterns are one. So it, one of the pattern is one. Okay, the perception is working. One. So then what happens? So I'm updating the weight. But with point one W1, I'm choosing. Okay, this point one W1 comes from this gamma. So naturally, I'm going to have one. So if you keep doing it, so you can see clearly that if I keep updating it, the weights, third iteration, I side fails, again I'm updating. Okay, uh, I'm using this as banana, I'll be updating it again. 1.9, the weight becomes. So if I'm not going to restrict the uh, growth of uh, weights, what happens is, the weights are going to increase linearly like this, okay, every iteration. But if I'm going to fix the gamma, alpha by gamma value, 1 by 0 0.1 we will fix, it is restricted only to 10. It's going to get saturated maximum as 10, 10. The weight can be 10, that's all. So this is an important idea in hyperparameter tuning. Okay, this idea of hyperparameter tuning. Okay. Now, this weight can be restricted. So, but the problem, can you guess what will be the problem because of restricting the weights? One more problem is the associations will decay if stimuli are not occasionally presented. If you are not going to present the uh, stimuli, appropriate stimuli, the associations may fail. Okay, it may decay out. The weight decays by around 10% at each iteration where there is no stimulus. Okay, so that's the problem. Okay, when gamma is equal to zero, see when AI is equal to zero, then you are going to get this term. When gamma is equal to zero, this becomes this. Okay, so when you are not presenting with the appropriate uh, stimulus, but you are using a gamma factor, then what happens? The weight will start decreasing. At some point of time, you may lose uh, the association completely. So that's the problem. Okay, so we are getting the point. What I'm saying. You got it? Okay, so in today's class, in fact, I have planned something uh, more like this. Okay, I'll be giving you uh, an assignment, the hands on uh, problems, okay, the hand calculation of the back operation. So the problem is here. Okay, I'm assigning it to you. Complete at least one iteration. Okay, the problem is this. So this is your initial set of weights and biases. This is the target input patterns. At least do one hand calculation. One for one iteration, do the hand calculation and submit it. Okay. I'm assigning it. Take another 20 minutes. Do one hand calculation and submit it. Okay, all right. Abhijit? Yes, sir. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the hands notes, I'm checking. I've sent the notes also. Okay, go through the notes. 
and work out this problem for only one uh, iteration. Submit it. It will become a good. Uh, okay. You will gain some insight. Okay, how it is working. Another topic. Do it. Hmm? Yes, sir. Hello, Bharat. Hello, Asa. Bharat, ma. Hello, Slow Burst. Try to solve it. 